Right then, so today, something a little bit different. I am gonna go in, gonna go into looking at how to set a rig up for your pole. And uh, I'm gonna try and make it as easy as you can. Rigs have to be simple, stupid things that are all over the place and random weird shiny patterns that there's no point in going to something that doesn't work, you know what I mean? Simple works and that's the way it is. So let's get into it, stop chatting and just let's do it. Right then, so on this little table here, you can see it has got what I generally use to make rigs more than more than not. Let's just focus it right in. We'll start up here. There. No, number 10, soft shot. And I'll go through what, what I use them for as I'm doing it. Right. All this focus. Number 8, Preston Innovation Stots. Simple rig winder. Right, obviously you need your float. That's just a simple pole float that I use. I'll tell you why whilst I'm going along. Right, line. I'll also explain and I'm going. S silicon tubing. I use small thin pliers, a pair of scissors and a tape measure. So, oh and I, I have got some silicon tubing pre-cut. Right, I'll start with the tape measure. The, the tape measure is a lot of fisheries have rules. You have to follow them rules because they're there for a reason. There's no point in breaking them. It's not what they're there for. So a tape measure I use to measure my hook lengths. That that's simply because a lot of places, especially where I go, they lock a, a, a twelve inch hook length, which is a foot from here to here. Ideally it's not what I I'd want to use but that's that isn't it so that's why we have a tape measure if anyone's wondering so uh, let's get to it so right so now first of all you want to take silicone tubing right this is where you don't want to be lazy you want, well, I use because because of the flow that I'm got, I'm using here. Yeah, don't know if you can see. Let me just there. It's, it's an oid flow. So so to prevent all that from coming out, especially when you're fishing for carp and amongst reeds and whatnot, I use a tiny, tiny little bit of silicone tubing just to it over the top of your float and then I use three parts of silicone tubing on the stem of my float and I'll show you now also for my line this is five pound I it's not very often I go much bigger than this fish in the pole so I take my line first of all where it's been in the clip on the spool Cut that off because I don't want damage line. I'm, I don't want to use damage line. I take a length off. I put it down under my foot just so I've got some tension on it so I can hold. So we're not even focused. Are we going to focus or are we not going to focus? Let me just sort that out because uh, there we go. Right, so I'll take my line. First of all is the little tiny silicone tubing that I've got for the top of my float slides on. Then I take the line and thread it through the eye of my pole float. Then the little silicone tubing goes over the top. Right, I use quite tight silicone because I don't like it moving. 
So bear with me, let it thread it down a bit. Now you want all your line, if you can get it to work on here, to follow all in the same pattern as it goes down as you can see there. Yeah. Right next. You want to thread your next piece of silicone tubing on onto your line. the stem of your float. Now the one mistake that a lot of people make here is with the first piece of silicone tubing they use they tend to push this part as you can see can you see yeah there if I put it against my leg here they tend to have that pushed all the way up now that's going to cause your line to put into your float and just trash it. So bring it down a bit. There, see? An inch or so under the float, which when you've got a lot of strain on, on your line, it's going to stop that from cutting in to the base, well, to the body of your float. And, and uh, floats will last a lot longer that way then. Right, second part of the tubing goes on. And it goes onto your stem of your float. Slide this on. Now you put that one halfway down. You see? Last piece. Now don't be stingy with the size of them. See, don't be stingy with them. About an inch in size. Bottom one goes on now. With this one, don't push it all the way on. Push it halfway on, like so. Once again, make sure you line following all in the same direction like so now like I was saying with, with the last one let's bring it over to you this last one here you want it hanging off slightly as you can see so you've got a bit of play see the rubber bends right there's a couple of reasons for this it stops tangle you know there stops the line tangling back up on itself and also stops the line rubbing on the bottom of your pole float and causing damage to it so now there that now is your pole float attached to your line and it is very positive as you can see so next let me just reel this back up so I can get a bit of tension right Next, you want to add your shots to your line. So I'll be back in two seconds with my tube of water so I can get it shotted up properly. Right, so I've got my tube of water just down here. I don't know if you can see or not this camera won't focus at the minute. It's just down here. It's, it's just a two litre bottle. I've got a top of it and filled it with water, that's all. So, now. For carp fishing, I use stots. That's what these are, stots. And that's because they're easier to put on thinner di diameter lines than uh, actual shots are, which makes it life a lot easier for me. And also, they don't ping off in the net as easy. Which is a big, you know, benef beneficial to you. So, another thing is, 
I never use my teeth to put shots and stocks on. I don't want all that crap in my mouth. Also, I don't want to damage my teeth anymore, you know. So, one stock goes on. I'll show you a closer look in a second. These are number eights, by the way, if anyone's wondering. Number eight stock. So, I don't know how many this float takes. I haven't bothered working it out, and I've never used this one before, so that's why I'm using using the tube of water to find out so also when you are putting shots or stocks onto your line never put them where you actually want them just put them low down where they are just put them low down because when you squeeze these onto your line you will cause a slight bit of damage onto the line which will give you a weak point and you don't want weak points in your line obviously you want you, you want your rig to be as strong as possible so that there I've had three number eight stocks on it so we just put drop in the water down here and check now that is nowhere near done yet it, the float's cocking but it's showing about that much so we'll keep going few more if you like me you'll drop them all the time keep your line nice and tall whilst you're doing this makes your life easy Come okay, with the pliers tighten them up there that's four another one goes on and this will also form my bulk the bulk of the weight of the shot weight on the line right there's five we'll test it again in the water nope still need some more That's enough then of number eight. Let's test. One wrapped around and on it with the little table thing. Right. I'll bring you down so you can see. see where the float is shot to yeah I like to dot my shot my float down more than this so I can see all them little tiny dinky bites so now this is where my stops can go away the ones that I pulled out on the table that I was using, don't swipe them onto the floor or anything, put them back in, you can reuse them again. For some reason I am not focused again. There we go. Right. So this is where I use a small number 10 shots. Get a couple out. I have problems with these little things. 
So let's get a few out. I've also broke my glasses, so things like this can be quite difficult for me, especially when they're so small. If I can get on to show you. There, that little tiny thing there, that's number 10. So, what I like to do is I like to put it on the table. You won't be able to see it, it's black on black. I'll explain what I'm doing. With the split facing upwards and I get my nail and just press my nail into the split just to open the split up a little bit so I can find it easier to get the shot onto the line. Now I am no expert doing this, it does take me a little bit of time to get these little number 10s right. 1 2 3 so we'll just check that. I'm hoping I can have two number tens on to be honest with you. Let's get one more on there. Should be right now. Yes, yeah, so I'll bring you down so you can see again. So, can you see how little of that float is sticking out? There, dotted right down. That's how I like it. So, when you get these little tiny bites that are just a, a dink, like so, you can see. Now I couldn't use that second number 10 dropper because it went too low as you saw, as you, well as you could imagine. So there's only one number 10 dropper on there. But that's fine, I'll sort that one out. So you want now you want to slide your float up your line. Don't grab your tip or anything, just under the bottom of the base, make sure it's wet. Here it look, a little bit, lubricate it, slide up your line, straight up there out of the way, so you got now this is where you want to sort these out, right, lubricate your fingers when you're moving your shots because you'll find they get quite hot, so dip your finger in a bit of water, pinch one, slide it up to where you want it. I'm going to have my org just up here. So up they come. All the stats coming up. Bear with me two seconds whilst I do this. So as you can see now, there's a bulk of number 8 dots. And my dropper, just grab it, slide it up out of the way. Now, where you've put all them shots in the line, if you slide your hand down, you will feel marks in the line. Now that is what you want to get rid of. It's not what you want as a weak point, so just snip it off. So that there, you'll shut it up. Now, just, 
I like to use just a standard overhand loop in these, which I'm not exactly the best at doing. So, somewhere, I do have something to help me if I can find it. Hold on a moment, bear with me. Something I made. Pen lid. Bit of wire in the end. A loop. I also use it as a baiting needle. I just help. I just use it to help pull my line through the loop that I make. That's all. Right. Always. Remember to lubricate your lines, wet it, just you know, a spit, pull tight. Now, I use the butt of my pliers in the loop, and we keep it wet to pull my nuts tight. Now, I ain't going nowhere, it's going to cut my fingers before it slips anyway. So then, take my scissors, as you can see there's my loop, a little tag end, just snip it off, leave yourself a couple of mil just in case, for now, and that dropper shot I like, I like to have my last dropper shot, right down just above where my hot length is going to be on, above that loop, just there. So, that's that part done. Easy enough, eh? Now, I don't attach hook lengths to the rigs that I make up. And it's just because I don't know which way I'm going to fish my pellet on the hook. I don't know if I'm going to need a soft hook or an expander on the hook. I don't know if I'm going to use a lasso and a hard pellet or a banded pellet, a hair rig, I don't know. So I just leave, that's that, that's my rig done. Now, obviously that's not very deep, so give a bit of depth to that, a few foot, yeah. We don't have no shots up here, I like my bolts just go straight down, a couple of droppers to drop for me. Just to drop my bait down, I need a little bit of space between to be honest with you. Don't make it hard. Come on, your bulk, a couple of droppers and that's all you need. So my bulk, positive, I don't know if you can see that. Drop, straight down, droppers, bam, that's that done. Now, put it on your winder. Hook on. I like your hook, but your loop goes on. Wind it. Now you always want to put more than you're going to expect to use. You see? And you also want your hook on your deep, on your float on your deep side. Now you're just going to keep putting your line on. So you're going to want quite a bit more than you ever think you'll need, just in case. The venue where you're going to use this is quite deep, you see. You don't want that uh, to end up. Well, that's long enough now. You're not going to want to end up being too shallow. You're not going to be able to fish down to the bottom. And to attach this, it's exactly the same way as I attach it to the top. Yeah, I, that I use to attach the top of my pole. Here, I use an overhand figure of eight loop. If you don't know what they are, let me know, and I can show you the knots that I use. I can demonstrate them for you. Also, again, remember to wet your line. If you don't know what it looks like, what it's called a figure of eight. If I can get it on camera, there, see, a figure of eight. 
So remember to wet your line. As before, I use the handle of my pliers. Just to tighten my loop down. Snip off the little bit of excess. Always leave yourself fuming in case to not just slip it a little bit. You know, just a bit of confidence just in case. But these knots don't slip very often. Off it goes. Nice and tight. Finish wrapping onto your winder. Bear with me a moment, my eyeballs aren't the best without my glasses, so I keep missing it. There we, are. there we go, there you have a complete rig, nice and neat, as you can see. Now that, I open up my drawer, and on my drawer, I put this one where I put my ones in. There's a few that I made up. And a little space on the end. Bam, in it goes, ready to use this on my next OT. So that, let's bring you back up. So now that is how I tie a hook with my um, pole rigs.